Well, I was right. They only help white folks. Am I good or am I good? I mean, it's obvious that there was a racial undertone to this book. The most obvious way to play that out would be to have the people who actually run things be white, which I think is probably going to be the case, and for most of the people the magicians help to be white. And that last one was confirmed by the main character Spencer when he went to visit his grandmother who's in the hospital. This issue is more of a world building issue, and normally I just skip it and wait for the next one to come out and review them together, but I think this one deserves some attention because the writer Brandon Thomas does a good job of using common tropes about the black community and mixing them in with this fantasy world. This issue picks up where the last one left off. Spencer's assigned grunt work to pay for trying to steal a spell. We later learn that this is mostly because the overseer let him go and because his father has some pull. Otherwise, he'd end up like this dude, a former magician who's had his magic stripped from him. Now, take one good look at him. What do you think he's doing? Damn right, he's selling drugs. Magical drugs. Like Sequoia and Weeping Willow. And he's selling them to old magic junkies. Look at him. He's over there like, Hey, young blood, you got some of that willow? Some of that good shit? I'll suck your dick. Look, he's even doing the crackhead scratch. I wouldn't be able to draw this without laughing. I'd be broken for days. And if you're trying to figure out what he's going to do with the willow, look at his hand. He's got one of those broke off wands with the leaf still on it. It's called a quick wand. And even having it, let alone using it, is prohibited. And in case you're curious, prolonged exposure to quicks will lead to the following. Acute cognitive impairment, anaphylactic shock, intense symptoms of withdrawal, necrosis, organ failure, suicidal thoughts, and baby dick. This shit sounds like the symptoms of Viagra. Jesus Christ. Your shit don't work no more. Just deal with it. But seriously, what I love about this is that it shows there's a price for losing the magic and how far people will go to get it back. It also shows that it's addictive, like most power, and people will do anything to get it back like using outlawed wands and selling magic ingredients to expelled magicians. Spencer has to take this guy out, and he does, along with his warehouse dash, and we see one of the dudes begging not to be sent back to that place, which I'm guessing is where Spencer ended up in the last issue. Remember, being there for just a few minutes completely broke him, so you know any prolonged stay will ruin somebody. I mean, this dude is probably just 35. We also see Spencer using one of those quick wands to talk with his grandmother in secret, which shows that even though he got straight up caught by the overseer and got beat down, he's still breaking the rules. This is the scene where he also confirms that the magicians only help white people. He says, yeah, I know. It's just my reward is that I'll get to follow around some deserving white folks and keep life from messing them up at every opportunity like it does for the rest of us. Normally, I'd be bothered by the race play because I'm just tired of it. What makes this work though is that Spencer doesn't know that much about the truth of his world and since we're following his story, neither do we. So we're not getting pummeled with this anti-white, we was Kang's message that you'd find in other stories like this. It's there, but not enough to take you out the story. And that's because Brandon Thomas likes the world build and he's more interested in telling you about that than preaching. So it works. And then we get this nice father and son moment where we find out Killmonger, I mean Aaron, is dating a white woman. I know. At least he has the sense not to take her home. You want to live through the night. You don't bring that white girl up in here. That's another clue to this story being a metaphor about slavery. I mean, the overseer thing is hard to miss, but when you factor in that only males can be magicians and only white people can be their charges, that keep your hands off our women thing ain't far behind. I mean, that train is never late. Aaron shacked up with his charge, which he only got because of what happened with Spencer at the ball in the last issue. So Spencer's dad wants his son to read Aaron's logs, go get Aaron, and bring him in unharmed. Now, throughout the whole issue, Spencer has been monologuing about how this upcoming situation wouldn't have happened if Aaron hadn't been at the ball. He's blaming Aaron, and he's technically right, but still wrong. And it's interesting to see that conflict because he knows he's wrong, but he doesn't want to admit it. So in the scene with his dad, Spencer refuses a job and his dad gets that switch and whoops that ass. Hadouken! This is what would happen if Ryu was your dad or if Son Goku was a responsible father. So of course Spencer reads the files, I mean after that ass whooping who wouldn't, and finds out that Aaron's got jungle fever for Nicole Trassel and has been meddling with her life, deviating from the plan which may include murder, and deleting files or hiding them so that there's no record. Spencer finds Aaron and Nicole at a terminal trying to get to Chicago. I don't know why your black ass wants to come here, you probably get shot. And Spencer knocks out the two backup magicians he brought with him. Now there's this cool thing about using magic on other magicians, it reflects back on you. 
Whatever you hit them with, you get hit with. Now, this only applies to people working with the Aegis and apparently using their wands. So in theory, if you did this to any magic user not tied to the Aegis, you're good. Unfortunately, even though Spencer takes these two guys out with sleep spells and says that it almost took him down, we don't see that. He's just standing there like nothing bothered him. And then he says, oh, well, that one almost took me out, but I won't let Aaron see that. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. And that's really the only art crit that I have, because other than Spencer still looking too old, he's supposed to be 16. The art is solid. Aaron and Spencer get into this fight, and then we get some backstory about Aaron. He's not from one of the 10 families, and maybe not even a natural magic user. He says that he didn't get born with magical blood, so maybe his power was gifted to him, or something any black person can learn. That's a whole new door of lore that just opened up. This is fantastic world building, not a thing to complain about, except this bullshit ending. It's not even a cliffhanger ending, the book just ends with the caption, we were supposed to be brothers. No. This is like watching a movie and then having them break for commercial in the middle of a scene. It's the worst place to go for a commercial. It's like going to commercial right after Morpheus says to Neo, I know exactly how you feel. What are you doing? He hasn't even told us what the Matrix is and then immediately said after that, of course, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You just did that. Twice. They barely start to argue at the end of the issue. Two more pages would have done it. Just enough to add some weight to the fight. I mean, the white girl just disappeared. That never happens. Oh look, a fight's happening. Where your white ass going? Girl, you white. Get your ass back in there and damsel. Niggas is fighting for you. Get your ass in there. But other than that, I think this is a good issue. Nice world building, fleshing out some of the characters a little bit. I continue to enjoy this series even though I think I know where it's going. But it's just done so well. Brandon Thomas and Carrie Randolph are just knocking this out the park. They've got the race politics in there, but they've got enough good story around it that it's not a bother. It doesn't take you out of anything. It's like coleslaw at a barbecue party. You know it's there, but it's not really bothering anyone unless they put it on your plate. So I think you should really check this book out. If you haven't picked it up, you really should pick it up. I think you'll enjoy it. And if you did read it, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Thanks for listening.